All right, good morning. Good morning. morning, and welcome to worship here at St. Mark's. It's a beautiful day, and absolutely nothing special is happening here. <laughs> um, no, actually, we're, we're all here not only to worship and to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, but also to uh, give our thanks and praise to Pastor Mary for her uh, life with us as we uh, prepare to release her into the blessed joy of retirement. Um, so it'll be a good day. We're going we're gonna to try to get through it without too many tears, maybe a little bit of laughter, but a lot of joy as well. Um, following our time together, you're all welcome to join us in Reese Hall for, um, for refreshments. And I don't know if there will be speakers. Or are you? Something's happening in Reese Hall after this. You're all welcome to join us. Uh, we're going to keep celebrating after worship. Um, so we're celebrating Pastor Mary. We're celebrating a baptism today, two baptisms today. Actually, Lila and Logan are here with us, and we're going to welcome them into uh, the baptism in which we share, and we'll celebrate that. That'll be great. So we have a full day of church, full morning. It's a beautiful day. God has made this day for us, and we are thankful. I do want to point out uh, one thing. The, the flowers on the altar are given from uh, Mary's children, and there's a beautiful note in the back of the bulletin uh, about that, a very nice sentiment. Um, so read that on your own time. But um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other announcements, but we're going we're gonna to keep that part short today. We're going to jump right in uh, to our worship. So friends, I invite you to stand as you are able, and we begin today with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he grants the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love that made alive by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite any uh, children willing to come down here to come down and see me for a few minutes. Come on, guys. Hey, guys. Hi. Oh, they just keep coming. Come on down. So these two I want you to meet. Here, sit this way and you can sit this way. Oh, so many of you. <laughs> Hi. So I want you to know these two right here are my grandchildren. This is Isaac and this is Elsa. So they, they're here with me today and I'm glad to have them. So something's happening to me later today. You know what that is? I'm retiring. Do you know what retiring means? Do you know anyone who's retired? No, I'm going to be the first one in the whole world. No. <laughs> How many people out here are retired? Oh, look at that. I'm joining a good crew. Um, so that's what I am. That means that I'm not going to be kind of doing work for pay anymore. That means I'm not going to be the pastor here anymore, right? Some of you I've known for a long time, four years, nine months, I don't know, for a while. Kunzi boys, we've been hanging out together quite a while, right? Yeah. And... Um, I'm thinking about the people God gives us in our lives to walk with. Some people are in our lives like forever, like our family, our parents, our kids, our grandkids. We're just stuck with each other forever, right? That's a good thing. Some folks are in our lives just for a little while, like teachers, right? You get teachers, and you get to know your teacher, and you love your teacher, and you have a great year with your teacher, and then the next year you have to start over with a new teacher. You've experienced that, haven't you? Yeah. So some people are with us in our lives for a little while, and pastors are kind of more like that. Um, bye. <laughs> and then, we're, then it's done, just like that. <laughs> See you, Julie. Yep, right now. Um, so I just, I just want us to recognize that those people that come in and out of our lives sometimes for a little while or a longer while, that's a gift from God. We are a gift to each other and to celebrate those times. And it's a little sad when we have to let them go. But uh, one thing, we are always, always, always connected because we're all part of God's family, right? Even if we don't know each other very well, we are all beloved children of God. We are all part of God's family together. So wherever I go, wherever you go, we will be part of that family. All those people out there, we're all part of the same family as well. And that's something to be thankful for. Let's pray. We'll say a prayer prick. Dear God, thank you for the people you give us to walk this life with for a short time or for a long time. And uh, help us to hold and treasure those relationships and uh, receive them as a gift from you. Amen. Amen. I'll see you later. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for sitting by me. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others 
and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, my friends, I've been thinking about this uh, sermon for a while now, and I had it all set. I had it all set, and you know, whenever you write your sermons too far in advance, things happen. This morning I was driving in and uh, listening to the radio, and I was listening to reports out of Buffalo, New York, yesterday. Um, reports of that vicious hate crime that slaughter born out of racism and misguided fear and fed by toxic propaganda. That, uh, that crime that left 10 people dead. Um, I was listening to tributes to the victims as I was coming in. Some of them were described. A hero, a beautiful soul. A mother to the motherless. So I had to do some adapting here because that's important. And I want you to know that this is why you are here, dear church. To stand and to speak and to act against this violence and racist hatred. This is what you have been sent into the world to be and to do. To stand in contrast to that. Wherever you go, to speak peace. To cure the sick. That is, to, to heal the diseases that breed such violence. To announce the reign of God. A different vision for life and love in the world. This is how Jesus sends us out and why. And it is sacred, holy work. Continue to do that work. But do it better and louder and bolder and with less fear and trepidation. Do it bravely. The world needs it. That... Uh, hero and that beautiful soul and that mother to the motherless needed it. Be a light in the world. There is no higher calling or purpose for Christ's church. So, now on to what I had prepared earlier, but I think that's important to say. I've spent the last few weeks um, reminiscing a lot. You know, retiring is a lot different than moving from one congregation to another, one call to another, one position to another. It's like a, a fundamental change in identity to retire. This last week, um, Pastor David called uh, John, my husband, and asked him for pictures of me as a baby pastor, right, uh, that he could use on Wednesday night's service, which he did. So John uh, spent several hours digging through boxes in the attic and uh, coming th up with these pictures. And, you know, it, it stirred up a lot of memories. It's been a lot of years, 37 years since our ordination, 
June 2nd will be 37 years. 42 years since we were married. That'll be May 25th. Lots of places and people and children and life events. Some struggles and missteps along the way. A lot of joy, a lot of gratitude. Yesterday was the uh, Women's Spring Luncheon. My daughter Amy came with me to that. And the whole, the whole theme of it was, thanks for the memories. Right? That's what they say to you when you get old. <laughs> um, but there were, you know, opportunity for people to write on cards, memories and wishes. Right? Sherry Berry had devotions. Um, and their devotions was appropriately so all about memories and uh, sweet memories memories that make us smile maybe cry a little bit i get that you you get that right you know how that is and then there was a sentence in the devotion that kind of jarred me that i actually ended up taking exception to no offense sherry you did good work but there was just something you know sometimes things you hear things differently or in a way that makes you think. And the line in the devotions was, God is in the memories. I'm not so sure about that. Especially because I've been working with this passage from Isaiah, where God says, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Huh. Don't remember the former things. Don't consider the things of old. I do think that God was a part of those memories while they were happening. But I think there's a real danger in keeping God stuck in the past. I want to challenge you to be careful of that. Being too focused on the memories of the past can keep us from perceiving the new thing that God is doing right now. God isn't in the memories. God is in the ever-present now. And God is right now dreaming a future, creating a vision, doing something new. Can you perceive it? A few weeks ago in a sermon, Pastor David posed a question that at least I've been thinking about for some time. I think it tri triggered a lot of... Uh, thoughts for a lot of you. He said, so what's brighter, St. Mark's past or St. Mark's future? And we all kind of went, oh, that's a good question. And we talked about it around coffee in, the, in Reese Hall, and we talked about it on the way home, and, and it's come up a few times since. What's brighter, St. Mark's past or St. Mark's future? Hmm, 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 hmm. So I'm part of a, a Zoom book club, it's clergy women from, well, it was a, from women around the world, but uh, Nancy just moved back from Paris to Texas. But, so it's from around the country, we get together every five, six weeks or so. Sometimes we read a book. Uh, but at our last, you know how that goes, at our last meeting I mentioned that question that Pastor David had asked, what's brighter, your church's uh, past or its future? And they all went, huh, good question. And then May Jean, who's kind of the mother of our group, who started it all, said, and you know what? It will be an LED brightness, not an incandescent brightness. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's really good, you know? It will be a different kind of bright, a new kind of bright. I thought that was pretty clever. And it reminded me of another story. Our first call in, started in 1985 in Petersburg, Ohio, and uh, that's where most of the baby pastor pictures came from that Pastor David had. There was a young woman there, I think she's probably in her 50s now, but she was young at the time. Beth, you guys, you remember Beth, Amy? She used to babysit our kids, and Beth's parents were uh, pillars of the congregation, you know? They farmed just across the highway from the church, um, they were very active, supportive of us and of the congregation, great people. So sometime in the last few years, I had 
uh, occasion to talk with Beth. We've kept in touch a little bit, you know, Facebook helps with that. But I was on the phone with Beth, and she was at that time council president. She'd grown up and got elected to council as president. And there was some sort of kerfluffle going on in the congregation. You know how, how church councils, how congregations can be. Not here, but you've probably heard rumors <laughs> of other places. So Beth and I were commiserating, and I told her a joke. It's, it's like one of those few jokes I could ever remember. It's my favorite iteration of the light bulb joke. How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? You know this one? A hundred. One to change it and 99 to say how much they liked the old one. Okay? <laughs> well, Beth just started laughing on the other end of the line. Yeah, you're all going, that is so true. Uh, Beth started laughing. And she told me that recently, at St. John Lutheran Church in Petersburg, the property committee had changed all the light bulbs, you know? They traded out the incandescent bulbs for LED bulbs. And her mother, who is now in her 90s, in a not-so-subtle protest about the new light bulbs, had started wearing sunglasses to church. <laughs> How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Don't get stuck in that, guys. What's brighter, St. Mark's past or St. Mark's future? Now, St. Mark's has had a bright past, no doubt about it. And God has been a part of all that has been St. Mark's over the past, what is it, 145 years or something? I was trying to do the math. But don't for a minute imagine that God is stuck in the memories. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? So next week, your, uh, your Stewardship for All Seasons team is inviting all of you into a conversation about what new thing God is dreaming for St. Mark's. For the last few years, in the middle of even in the middle of the uncertainty of the pandemic, the stewardship team and the council leadership dared to dream God-inspired dreams and identified new ministry initiatives that have, that have come from, to fruition that are still unfolding. Outreach to our new neighbors in North St. Paul, new technology to enhance our online presence and connect with more people in ways different than we have done before. We brought intern Eric on board, and with his leadership, St. Mark's welcomed the Safi family from Afghanistan, a move that runs counter to the current cultural narrative of exclusion and racism, by the way. We've ordered a new electronic sign that will be installed in the near future. Pastor David thought it would be good to have it for today so that the first sign up there would be, Bye, Pastor Mary. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on the way. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Next week, you get to spend time in the presence of God and of one another, looking to and preparing for the future. What might be next? What bright ideas does God have for St. Mark's? And how might you participate in that? It's holy conversation. Be a part of it. This is St. Mark's, you. You are a strong and a faithful congregation. You are doing good gospel work in this place and in the world in so, so many ways. Keep the momentum going toward that bright LED future. Now, John and I, <laughs> oh, I knew this would get me pretty somewhere, somewhere along the line. John and I don't get to be part of the next leg of the journey of St. Mark's, but you all do. We have our own new path to walk and bright future to anticipate. We will carry wonderful memories of our time with you. 
But more than just memories, we also hold great expectations for your future. We are so grateful that four years ago you called us home. We have been welcomed and cared for by you in some tough stuff in our own family as well. Think of the death of my mom. I am humbled that you trusted me to lead you for a while. Thank you for your partnership in this good gospel work. We love you and we will miss you. But let me tell you something. Never ever doubt that the future is bright. You guys are on a roll. Keep the momentum going. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. God is about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? This present moment shines, and your future is at least as bright as your past. Amen.
this time, I'd like to invite um, Lila and Logan and Dana and Trent and the sponsors to come and join me at the font. Uh, the congregation, you're invited to stand as you're able. And if you want to follow along in your hymnals on page 227. Hi, Lila. Hi. What's your baby's name? Did your baby hit it? <laughs> All right. All right, friends. Hey, buddy. All right. Good. Uh, friends, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. We present Lila Nora McKenzie and Logan Lloyd McKenzie for baptism. Awesome. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have these children baptized into Christ? If so say we do. We do. We do. Amen. All right. As uh, parents bringing these children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities uh, to live with your children among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Uh, parents and sponsors as well, I ask you, do you promise to help these children grow in Christian faith and life? If so, say, I do. I do. Amen. And while we know that God does the bulk of the work in baptism, that parents and sponsors are entrusted to fulfill these promises, so too does the congregation and the church of God have a role to play as well. So people of God, do you promise to support Lila and Logan and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so say we do. We do. Amen. And now I ask all of you parents, sponsors, and congregation to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of the world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Hi, Lila. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of water and going to put it on your head three times, okay? All right, your mom's going to tip you back a little. Are you okay? You ready? Okay. Lila Nora, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great job, sweetie. There you go. All right. All right. And Logan Lloyd, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good job, man. Good job, bud. All right. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Logan with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Sustain Lila with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Lila, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. Logan, child of God, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Here's one. Let me give you one more. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. On behalf of the youth of St. Mark's Lutheran Church, we want to welcome you into our church family. The youth of our church have tied this blanket for you and have prayed for you by name, asking God to surround you with his love and grace. Welcome to the family. All right. Uh, Let us welcome the newly baptized. Together, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Again, let's welcome the newly baptized. Good job, job, guys. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uplifted by the promise, hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Your kingdom has come near, O God, and we give thanks to you for those whom you send out to proclaim your good news. Continue to raise up faithful laborers to reap the harvest so that all may know the fullness of life through your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For bloom and blossom, for green shoots and new growth, we rejoice and give thanks to you, the author of creation. Bring favorable weather to farmers and gardeners, those with vast acreages and those with backyard and community plots. May new life spring forth and the whole of your creation be nourished. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your Son came to show the way to peace, instructing us to love one another as you have loved us. Forgive us our sins and our failure to see your face in others. We repent of the sins of violence and racism, which the senseless death of those slain in Buffalo this week, and by one enthrall to such sins. We ask, Lord, how long must your children weep Bring an end to the sickness of our hearts and heal the whole of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our nation marks a million souls who have died as a result of this pandemic, we offer our prayers for those who mourn mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, husbands and wives, children and friends lost to COVID. As we continue to live with this disease in our midst, we give thanks and offer our prayers for healthcare workers, for frontline doctors and nurses, for public health officials and researchers and all who work to bring healing, care, and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the ways in which your Holy Spirit moves in and through us as followers, followers of your Son and as the people of St. Mark's, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for the newly baptized, for Lila and Logan, for all the children of our congregation, for our elder saints, and for all who labor for the sake of the kingdom here at St. Mark's. We thank you also, Lord, for the ministry of Pastor Mary, and as we celebrate our shared life together as a church and as friends, we ask for your blessing to ever be upon Pastor Mary, and that you may continue to bless us. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and lead us into the bright future you are laying before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together let us pray as our Lord and Savior has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, friends, you may be seated. A few notes about uh, our communion. Uh, the ushers will guide you uh, to and down the center aisle. Uh, once there, Pastor Mary, you can form two lines as you come forward. Pastor Mary will meet you there in the middle to offer uh, the wafer. If you prefer gluten-free, please let her know. We can accommodate that as well. Once you've received uh, the bread from Pastor Mary, you can proceed to either side where myself or intern Eric will offer wine or grape juice if that is your pre preference. Again, let us know if you prefer grape juice and we will offer that to you. Uh, once you commune the wine, you can place your empty cup and the baskets on the end on either side and return to your seats. Um, and as here at St. Mark's, our table is open because it is the Lord's table and it is open to all and all are welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. Uh, friends, I invite you to be seated, and I invite our council president, Mike, to come forward. And... Pastor Mary, on May 20th, 2018, we of St. Mark's Lutheran Church called you to be pastor in this place to proclaim uh, God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness, and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble and at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you and your family have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ, in our service to this community, in God's mission to the whole world. As you leave this community of faith and enter into retirement, we pray for God's blessings and say, well done, good and faithful servant. People of God, members of St. Mark's, do you release Pastor Mary from service as your pastor? We, we do, do, and we give thanks, thanks to, God to God for our ministry, ministry together. together. Pastor Mary, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with St. Mark's Lutheran Church? I do, but I'm going to have John come up here with me. Because I've never done this alone. I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together in this good gospel work. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Mary among the people of God in this place. Lord, you watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and in times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Mary and John and their family and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future, the bright future you give to us. As Mary has been a blessing to us, may you bestow your blessing and protection upon her through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. No, stay here just a minute. Um, I'll say more later, but I do want to just say that one of the things that makes it easier to go right now, I mean, I, we, life situation is such that it is that this is the time for me to retire, but I, one of the things that makes it a lot easier is that I feel like I'm leaving you in the very competent hands of Pastor David. And uh, you're lucky to have him. I'm glad we called him. And blessings on your ministry as you continue on as well. Please rise. You can go if you want. Or you can stay with it either way. <sighs> and now, my dear siblings in Christ, by your hands may love be shared. By your voice may peace be spoken. By your eyes may beauty be seen, by your ears may truth be heard, and by your life may the song of Christ be sung. Amen.
Go in peace. Seek the Lord. Thanks be to God.